Did you know that you can use a USB or a Bluetooth mouse with your iPad or your iPhone? It's true, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how. Let's go. So to use a mouse with your iPad or indeed your iPhone, you are going to need iOS 13 or iPad OS 13. So you need at least an iPhone 6S, an iPad Air 2, an iPad Mini 4 or any iPad Pro in order to install and use iOS 13 or iPad OS 13. And there's a video linked up the top and in the description with more information about compatibility. To use a USB mouse, you are going to need a Lightning to USB adapter. This is the Apple Lightning to USB 3 adapter. It comes with a Lightning port to charge your device, as you can see there. And in my opinion, it is the most reliable Lightning to USB adapter. You can buy cheaper ones, but this is my recommendation because it works and it is reliable every time. And the reason I like a USB mouse is that you don't have as much latency as Blue Bluetooth, and if it comes in a combo like this MK345 from Logitech, you can actually use the keyboard and the mouse together with the one adapter in your USB cable. However, you can also use any Bluetooth mouse like this one also from Logitech and all the gear that I use in this video will be linked down in the description if you want to check it out. Now, setting up our USB mouse is as simple as plugging the USB wireless adapter into our Lightning to USB adapter and then plugging that in to the Lightning port of our iPhone or iPad. Now, what you'll see pop up down here is the assistive touch option and that's what I'm going to show you how to set up. You can see I've already set mine up. I've got my mouse pointer there, I'm ready to go. However, when you plug your mouse in for the first time, it won't work until you turn on assistive touch. So I'm here in the general settings option here on my iPad. And what I'm going to do over here on the left, I've selected accessibility. And then over here on the right, we're going to tap on touch. This is going to take us into our touch options for accessibility. We're going to tap on assistive touch, and then we're going to tap to turn that on. So now you can see that the dot has popped up in the corner here, and I've got my mouse pointer, but I've already customize some of the features to make the pointer a little larger and to make it red. Let's show you how you can customize your own mouse options here in iOS. Now to set up our mouse options and our button assignment, we go to this same screen here, the assistive touch screen, but if we scroll down, you'll notice here that in the middle we have pointer devices. We're gonna tap on devices, and we're gonna tap on, in this case, USB receiver. And here is the mouse that we're actually using. And you can see here at the moment, button one is a single tap, so that's our left button. Button two is an open menu, and that is our right button, as you can see there. And button three, this middle one, is our app switcher. So that will switch between our different apps there as well. Now we can change all of these by tapping. So if say we wanted this open menu, this middle button, also the right button, to actually be our home button instead, we can come in here, tap on home, and go back to USB receiver. And now when we tap on our right button, we go to the home screen instead. So you can actually customize your mouse functions to whatever function you think will be most useful. This is what I use generally, single tap, home, and app switcher, because then you can switch between your apps with ease with the middle button, you can go straight to your home with your right button and your left button just taps in as you would be used to with your touch screen. So that's all set up now. We'll tap on devices and then go back to assistive touch to show the other functions that we can set up here for our mouse. Now we'll touch quickly on mouse keys. This is actually using the keyboard function to control the mouse pointer. And I don't use this very much. I don't find it particularly useful, but you can play around with that if you're using a keyboard as well. But the one you will want to take a look at is this one, the pointer style. So you can see here, I've got this on the second smallest size. You can drop it down to get a really small one, or you can go right up to a jumbo size pointer there. And the reason that you have all this range is that remember, this is an accessibility feature. This is for folks who are vision impaired, so it needs to be able to be really clear. The other thing we can do, we'll bring it back to that size, we can change the color. Now I choose red because it goes faster, but you can have gray, white, blue, anything else, whatever is going to help you and give you the most contrast, you can change it to there. So let's uh, let's go with green just for something a bit different. And then you've got auto hide here. So the auto hide we can turn off, meaning that pointer will be on the screen always. Or if we turn auto hide on, we can actually adjust how many seconds before it will hide. So let's just turn this all the way down to say three seconds. And if we count one, two, three, without touching the mouse, it goes away, move the mouse and it comes back again. So there you go. That's how we can adjust our pointer style and our auto hide features here for our mouse. 
Now the on-screen keyboard option here you can turn on and this will show the keyboard more often when you're trying to enter things and you can actually click and tap on that. It's more useful to turn off when you're using a keyboard as well. So I tend to leave it off most of the time. We've also got this always show menu option. If we turn that off, see the little dot we have, our assistive touch dot, that goes away. If you turn it on, then that's there all the time and that's your quick access menu. So if you don't think you'll need to use that and you don't like it cluttering up your display, you can turn that off and then you're using it just like a desktop, Mac or PC. You've just got your pointer on the screen with nothing else showing. The next option here is our tracking speed. So if we turn that down, oh, it's like moving it in molasses and you can't move it very fast. But if you move it all the way up, then well, uh, uh, yeah, uh, for people with reflexes much better than mine. Let's get that back down. Yeah, about there is where I tend to put it, just so that I've got uh, the ability to reach all the corners of the screen without having to move my mouse too much. But it's not so twitchy that I'm going to lose accuracy and control. But that's a personal thing. You can dial it in however you like. Now, there are a bunch of other controls here, but in the interest of time, I'll let you explore those yourself. That is the basics of getting your keys and your buttons set up and your tracking speed and pointer set up. So let's now jump back over to the home screen by clicking on our right button and taking a look at how we can use this practically in our iPad. Now, there are a heap of apps that this is actually really useful for, but things like video editing and audio editing is particularly good because anything where you need to have more precise control over sliding things around, where you've got audio here that we need to move around and where we need to actually edit the start and the end points, having a mouse instead of the touch screen with your fingers can actually be really useful. And the ability to then switch around between your different apps at the tap of a mouse button, it just means that you can keep your hands down here and you you can be doing your work. So yes, I was super skeptical about how useful a mouse would be at first until I started using it. And here we are a couple of months later and I lean on my mouse very heavily. I find it a super useful piece of gear for my iPad and even my iPhone. Because yes, we can even connect and use a mouse on our iPhone. Now, it may not be quite as useful on a tiny screen like this, but I just wanted to show that yes, it is indeed possible. Now that's all good for our USB mouse. What about our Bluetooth mouse? Well, this is where it gets a little tricky because if you come in here to Bluetooth like you would assume you could, it's not gonna actually show up because the mouse is only an accessibility item. It won't show up in your regular Bluetooth settings. So what we need to do is come back down to accessibility. We need to go into touch again, tap on that one, and then come in here to assistive touch like we did before, scroll down to devices and tap on this one. Now with this one, we just tap, we turn it on first, and we we tap and hold on the connect button to actually put it into Bluetooth pairing mode. On the top here, it'll start flashing. Blue, like the little blue light will start flashing saying that yes, it's in pairing mode. We tap on Bluetooth devices here and it'll pop up in just a moment, unless it's gonna prove me a liar here. There it is, and we'll tap on the Bluetooth mouse. A little worried there for a moment. Things like this sometimes don't work when you're doing them in front of a camera. There we go, the pin number for this one is 0000. If you're using a similar Logitech Bluetooth mouse, we pair it, we're connected, we're off to the races. And there you go, without any cables, without any adapters or wires, we once again have our mouse connected. Now, as I mentioned, the only benefit of USB is that Bluetooth can be a little bit laggy, a little bit of latency in their sometimes between your movements and the actual pointer on the screen. But you'll get used to that and it's uh, considering you don't have to have any other gear, a Bluetooth mouse can actually be a pretty handy piece of gear for your iPhone or your iPad. If you want to check out any of the gear that I used in this video, check out the links in the description below. There's two more videos down the bottom there about how to use mice and keyboards with your iOS devices. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.